Hi, Sai and Sai here from User Radar. Um, today we are checking out Arturo's brand new thing. This is Astrolab, which is kind of a bit, kind of like half controller, half hardware synth, somewhere in the middle. It does all sorts of software-y things, yes, right? Yes, so, so Astrolab is kind of, um, it's, it's an interesting uh, release for Arturia and kind of generally an interesting release for the market as a whole. So it kind of fits in between two worlds. So on the one hand, it's a little bit like things we've seen recently like uh, Akai's MPC keys or MPC yeah, Live, yeah. which kind of mm -hmm. kind of puts all of that Akai software into a standalone box, yep. or even things like Ableton Push 3, where mm -hmm. you're getting kind of live uh, housed in hardware. Yeah, so kind yeah. of software put into hardware form, mm -hmm. which is kind of half the story of what's going on here. So this is Astrolab is effectively uh, Arturia's analog lab software, yeah. but in put there. into self-contained standalone hardware. Mm -hmm. The reason I say that's kind of half the story is because unlike things like the MPC keys, which is a bit more like a, like almost like a door in the box yeah. or a kind of workstation thing mm -hmm. and similar with push, which is, you know, Ableton Live within hardware. Yeah. This isn't that, this isn't another kind of standalone DAW thing. No, no workstation stuff here. It's more performance. So right? Astrolab is more, it's kind of sits somewhere between that world and more traditional kind of stage pianos yeah, or stage yeah, keyboards. Yeah. So let's give a little bit of background. So for anyone who's not aware of Analog Lab, Analog Lab is kind of part of Arturia's whole V Collection mm -hmm. ecosphere. Um, v Collection being uh, Arturia's long-standing collection of synth and keyboard and packed with different emulation things. Yeah. Now Analog Lab kind of sits um, on top of all of that as effectively a preset player. So you can buy Analog Lab, Lab completely separately. Yeah. And what it does is it takes all of those V Collection instruments as well as um, Arturia Pigments, which is their kind of big flagship soft synth, and yeah. then these augmented plugins, which are their newer things. Mm -hmm which are kind of sample-based, uh, interesting, yeah. quite modern synths. Yeah. And Analog Lab takes all of these uh, synth engines and basically collects the presets from these and lets you engage with them on a very kind of uh, user-friendly preset level. Yeah. So what Astrolab does is basically takes that and mm -hmm. puts it into a, uh, a hardware instrument. And it's 61 key. Yeah, 61 key semi weighted keyboards. Yeah. Um, obviously, quite a lot of connectivity on there, which we'll get to shortly. Yeah. Let's talk about the interface first. So, anyone who has used Analog Lab will actually probably find a lot of this quite familiar. Yeah. So, any Analog Lab preset, you can kind of basically load up all of these sounds from pianos and synths, like kind of vintage synths, more modern things from pigments. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and they all have these four macro controls. Yes. Which are kind of Broadly labelled like they are here, brightness, timbre, time and movement, mm -hmm. which kind of generally relate to obviously brightness is often kind of filter cut off. Yes. Uh, yeah. and it kind of changes the sound, um, time shifts kind of envelope parameters and movement sure. often does things like, you know, apply a vibrato or okay. LFO, yeah, things, yeah. things like that. Yeah. So, so those are kind of unified across all of these presets. So you mm -hmm. kind of know, it's quite easy to navigate, you know what you're doing. Then you have kind of four effects, um, right. two of which are configurable insert effects, and then these delay and reverb. So all of that is basically exactly as it exists. Yeah, in the and it's similar to the previous um, lab controllers where they had eight encoders as well, but they were never listed as such, were they? So no, but I mean, our Arturia have obviously been de developing a lot of this stuff yeah. over the years. With their, they've got a massive line of controllers, mm. a lot of which are kind of designed to very easily sync up with like Analog Lab and yeah, things like yeah, that. Yeah. So, so all of that is quite familiar. Mm -hmm. What I guess is a bit newer here is this kind of central um, controller, which looks a lot like a smart thermostat, we the same. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which I'm not, I don't hate. No, no, it's... Uh, everyone it's... likes a smart thermostat. It's like a... It's yeah. Cool. yeah, it's a very tactile thing. But basically what this is, is a kind of like, it's a nice little screen and it's your main browsing interface. Mm -hmm. So again, as with the actual software version of Analog Lab, you can search through all of these different sounds based on different um, categories. So you can you've got, got your types here. And so we click this to kind yeah. of browse things. Types, obviously different types of sound from kind of fret, bass, keys, pad, pianos, yeah. etc. All familiar um, territory, yeah. Or you've got instrument types where you can browse the different instruments. 
So we've got everything from the V collection, plus, as we said, kind of pigments and the augmented plugins as well. Yeah. And then um, you've got things like this nice, nice artist list. Um, this is my favorite. You bit. were digging into this earlier. Yeah, I love this. So, yeah. so this kind of will, has a lot of presets categories, either by uh, things made by kind of artists themselves, or most of these are kind of these tribute things where, obviously, you've got you know everyone from the Beatles to Aphex Twin, even in that first thing, and. You spent a lot of time playing around with the boards of Canada list yeah, earlier. That. Yeah, yeah. And it's just, I mean, it's just fun. It really inspires you to have a go and have a play. And it's not like, it's not a complete exhaustive list of everything, but it's kind of like a bit of a highlights. But yeah, but basically these yeah. are all different ways to browse and engage with this, yeah. these um, sounds. So many on it. So <laughs> again, it's worth reiterating that this isn't a controller. These are all, all loaded into the hardware itself. Yeah, um, yeah. The Astrolab itself ships with um, a thousand sounds on board, Crikey. and there's I think Arturus say seven thousand available, making use of um, the the kind of software side and apps to to kind of manage and load different yeah. sounds on. Yeah, because presumably, as V Collection grows, so will the capacity for putting more stuff on. So yeah. Yeah, so I mean, obviously, this this is kind of standalone hardware, mm. and the idea is that you know it's all self-contained. You're obviously you're not dealing with things like um, stability issues or latency or things no, as no. you might with a controller. One of the big selling points of Astrolab is the fact that it kind of plays very nicely with its software counterpart, as you would hope. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so, to that end, it comes kind of connect connectivity-wise. You've got USB-C, which is what we've got hooked up here. Yeah. It's also Wi-Fi enabled. Uh, it's Bluetooth compa compatible as well, although right. the Bluetooth is basically um, just for audio streaming from, like, so you can stream kind of audio from a phone or whatever. To, okay, so sort of back in track thing, you know, yeah. auxiliary. So the Wi-Fi, what the Wi-Fi does is it allows it to um, connect to either uh, Analog Lab Pro, which is uh, can be running on, like, your desktop on your computer, mm -hmm. Uh, and there's also an app called Astrolab Connect, yeah. which we've got an early version of. And so what these let you do is um, Astrolab Connect, the app, is kind of lets you browse presets. You can uh, access um, Arturia's store to kind of get yeah, cool. both free and paid for yeah. presets, which you yeah. can add to the library and kind of transfer to this. You can also build playlists, mm -hmm. um, obviously kind of, uh, which really helps you manage your sounds for... Yeah. gigs and things like that and then you can kind of like sounds um, and various things like that there's obviously a lot more that you can do from the actual uh analog lab pro software on desktop yeah, um, and we're going to demo that in a little minute because i want to just show you how easy it is okay let's just talk about a few more features on here before we look at the software sure. side so we've got part one and part two here as well as being able to load just a single preset we can also um add a second one, which yeah. we can then layer up or split across the keyboard. Cool. Which is quite nice easy to do. I'm just gonna show you how that works here. So we've got, at the moment, loaded this, just a simple kind of American grand yeah. piano, I think, which is like where the first uh, presets when you load up the instrument. If we go to part two here, and then we just press this, we can then edit part two, and let's say we wanna add a synth pad. Uh, let's go with that Tokyo Dreams one, which is quite nice. Um, and now we've got... So we've got the piano on top, underneath, essentially. Yeah, so well, if we want to split those, how do we do that? So if we hit the split button here, yeah. um, this will just apply a split. And then if we hold it down, it's quite nice and easy. We can just oh, oh, okay. press any key. All oh, right, And then nice. obviously you've got uh, and synth pad up here. Brilliant. And grand piano down here, which is, you know, pretty Pretty Sorry. kind of standard stage piano, yeah. stage keyboard stuff, but really handy and built into this whole kind of world of analog lab. Lets you do some really interesting things. I mean, it's worth, we've been talking about obviously these these functions. It's worth kind of dialing back a bit to just talk about V Collection itself and actually what you get in terms of... Um, it's huge. So what's interesting about um, the, having the V Collection sound is that not only do you get kind of those standard... Um, kind of, you know, stage piano and keyboard staples, but you get this whole list of things, which includes obviously like a lot of classic instruments. Obviously you've got DX7 here, things like your Emulator 2, Juno, Jupiters, um, Prophets, uh, classic Moog synths, Oberheims and things like that. 
But then there's some really interesting stuff in there as well. Um, things like the Buckler Easel, yeah. the Synclavia, yeah. the yeah. Synthy here. So worth touching on how much access you get to those synths themselves. So Analog Lab, um, as we've said, is effectively a preset player that kind of exists to the side of the V collection. Yeah. So along with Astrolab, you get Analog Lab Pro, mm -hmm. which is basically the desktop version of those of that preset player. Yeah. So you have access to all the preset sounds. But as with like the desktop version of Analog Lab, if you have if you've bought the V collection itself or bought the individual instruments, so for example, if you own pigments or whatever, yeah, you can it populate it with those presets. Yeah, you yeah. can. Uh, well, you you have no, you have access to those presets anyway. Right. The presets you will have access to anyway. Um, or at least kind of all the ones from Analog Lab. But ah. the difference is that if you own the plugin, yes. within Analog Lab, you can kind of click uh, to edit the preset it's, itself yeah, and yeah. you can go, Deeper. obviously, get into the actual UI. Yes, you can then configure things. Yeah. Um, you can also then, uh, that opens up the possibility to create sounds and uh -huh. create your own sounds and move on to here. So let's just take a really quick look at that because one thing I really like about this is just how easy that is. So you're going to be editing in the box, out of this box, yep. and then so bring it back over here. Let's take a quick little look at how okay. easy that is. Cool. So this is just a really basic little um, analog style polysynth patch that I've created. I loaded up a default preset earlier. Um, mm -hmm. Just, you know, some simple analog oscillators. I've set up these three, uh, these four macros down here as well. One, which yeah. is control and filter cutoff. Yeah. One, the attack and release of the envelopes, uh, the amp envelope. One, which is kind of balancing between these uh, the the kind of traditional low pass filter and a comb yeah, filter. Both types, yeah. And then another that's adjusting the speed of the pulse width modulation, which is being driven by this LFO here. Right. It's a ba really basic synth patch, but I just kind of wanted to show how easy it is to take that, which, as I said, is just something I've completely created from scratch yep. um, and just put it into the hardware Straight here. Straight into there. So I'm going to just save this as a new thing. I'm going to save this as uh, size synth 2. Um, yeah. Obviously, I can kind of do things like add comments this change and tagging all the metadata tag, stuff tag metadata thing i've only yeah. got one thing here at the moment but i could obviously do a lot more with that yeah set myself as the author and i'll save that yeah so yeah if i just close pigments and then open up analog lab which again this is just the standalone version of analog lab this this analog lab like this comes with astro lab um, yeah. and it has access to kind of all of those presets that we we're talking about as well as um places where you can kind of access or buy extra sound packs um, this discover new sounds thing here, you can see we can buy packs based on various things from Arturia um, and then kind of find sounds by creator, uh, by instrument, by type, things like that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just dig up that size synth 2 preset that we just created. So if I search it here, mm -hmm. um, again, I haven't had to import that. It's just because I've saved it in pigments. It's here already. Right. I'm going to hit that heart to like it, which just makes it a little bit easier to find. And now what I'm going to do is go up here and you can see because I'm connected to uh, Astrolab here, I've got this link to Astrolab option here. Right. Quick thing to note on this. Okay. As we said before, when we're talking about connectivity, in theory, um, by being on the same Wi-Fi network, uh, we this. should be able to do this completely wirelessly. Without the cable, yeah. You might note that we're connected with a mm -hmm. cable here because actually we were trying to do this earlier and I haven't been able to get the Wi-Fi link up to work. No, this is pre-release stuff, Yeah, we, it, so. we're working with an early firmware yeah. version here and an early version of Analog Lab. Yeah. I've not spoken to Arturia yet about that and it could be something to do with our Wi-Fi network. So we're basically saying benefit of the doubt. Yeah. I'm assuming it sure that it's going to work yes. on launch, but... For now. Can't comment on it for now. No. We're kind of using a wired connection. Anyway, I hit link to Astro Lab. I'm now linked. Mm -hmm. uh, down here, I've got this library, which is Astro Labs library. Yeah. So if I go back up to, let's just um, search out my sound again. Let's go size synth, size synth two, and if I drag that down into the library, um, you'll see this is now transferring it over, and like that, it's synced. I'm going to just unlink. Just like that. Just unlink from Astro Lab, just so. Uh, just to prove. You can see. <laughs> and just close this. Okay. Got we it. now go on here and let's go down to these liked presets. So like I said, I liked that in the library there yeah, so. just to make it a bit easier to navigate. I haven't really got many liked things on here. Uh, so, and then you go liked, size synth 2. The it's sound there. that we've just loaded in. And you can see, let's just kind of... 
And then these. That's your filter, I've yeah. set up. I've got that filter uh -huh. macro there. This one here that's dialing sure in that. Envelope, wasn't it? Uh, the comb filtery. Oh, was that the comb? Sound that was the envelope. Charging. Envelope here. Yeah. Yeah, which is increasing the attack and release. And then adjusting the pulse width modulation speed. Entirely as I've set up in pigments. Yeah. And, and like is. I said, that's a really basic, mm. simple sound that I've created. But pigments is, for our money, one of the most, um, you know, it's debate. It, you can debate whether it's worth the best plugin synths on the market. I, it's up there. But what it's you is definitely not up for debate. This is definitely one of the most versatile ones. Mm -hmm. So pigments has, um, it's got this additive engine. It's got sampling engines. It's got granular stuff. You've got wavetable yeah, sounds. Yeah, so much going on. Loads and of so, modulation so going on. Just having that mm -hmm. as a plug-in thing and then being able to transfer it onto here. You're That's kind brilliant. of talking almost limitless sounds that you can kind of build yeah, yeah. and put onto this. But the speed, that was instantaneous. It was literally, there was no yeah. loading times going on there. It was instantaneous. No, you will notice there are um, longer loading times for some uh, patches, particularly things for the... Um, augmented patches which use kind of samples, samples and things like that. So, so you will get like okay. longer load loading times. Yeah. And I would assume that might, you know, obviously Wi-Fi networks and things might mm -hmm. have an impact on that. Um, as well as being able to do that, obviously, we talked about before the fact that you can create uh, playlists um, for kind of gigging yeah. and uh, performances and mm -hmm. things like that. These work by you um, can effectively build these around songs. Okay. So you can kind of add a song and then here's this, this kind of top one, we just put a couple of presets from those boards of candle ones we're playing around with. Yeah. But it makes it really easy to navigate, um, particularly for kind of live performance performers and things like that. Yeah, right. Yeah, and it's yeah, obviously yeah. worth saying that like you can save patches either as single a single kind of part or you can save layers and splits and things to, sure. to be able to recall those. Are you designing the playlists within here? You can do it in here and the editor or uh, just the editor? You can do it. From within the, the yeah, hardware itself, yeah. do it on desktop, or you can also do it in the Astro oh, Lab yeah. Connect app. Yeah. Which actually, from from playing around, that seems like to me the most convenient way to do it. Yeah. If I was gonna, um, we haven't kind of we've we've had this for kind of a week or so, but it, if I was spending longer with it, who knows how you'd end up kind of using it from admin point of view. But it seems to me that at the moment that app seems like the way that if I was gonna, you know prepare for a performance or whatever, that mm -hmm. would be the way That's to go. That's the way to go, yeah. A couple of other features worth, in, worth mentioning on here. You've got a little MIDI looper, okay. um, which basically lets you set up um, loops of up to kind of 32 bars. It's very basic that it's, mm -hmm. it kind of... It's sort of leaning into a bit of a arrangement sort of territory. Yeah, but I mean, if you're, you, can't, you, you can't, for example, can't even overdub on it, or you can like, literally oh, okay. just kind of create a loop. Handy, obviously, for if you want to build a chord progression and then kind of play over the top of that. Yeah. Or say you want to get a little riff going mm -hmm. in order to prepare during sound check or whatever, but not the most, you know, it's, it's not a sequencer. No. It's no, not a sequencer no. and it's not definitely not kind of workstation things. Mm. Got an arpeggiator, nice handy arpeggiator. Mm -hmm. Got a chord and scale mode. Yeah. Uh, one thing, one small gripe I have with this, if we're going to get onto a few negatives, which is admittedly this is a really minor one. So if we go into shift and scale, um, you can turn scale on there uh, and then you can edit. Um, if we long press this, we go into the edit thing. Yeah. Um, so we can, for example, set up a scale, let's see, just change our root notes, change our scale. And what is really nice here is that these light guides over here above oh, the yeah. keyboard, which then show us um, They've what changed. scale we're working with. Yeah. Um, but minor annoyance is that you set up a scale, fine, handy. But then if we go um, home and then if we go onto a different preset, for example, it automatically kind of gets with the scale. And if you go into these settings again, you have to go and um, Redo all over reset again. the root note. Which is understandable because, I mean, obviously, for example, if you wanted to set scales that change with different presets or whatever in a performance, yeah. but at the same time... Um, It'd be nice say, to have the option to have that on or off. Yeah, say you're at home, you're kind of someone who is using it to learn scales or whatever. It'd be nice yeah. to be able to browse to, to, to say, base sounds yeah. within that. Yeah. All that being said, you know, this is a, not the, the cheapest keyboard in the world, 
probably not an entry level thing. No. So that scale mode is kind of um, maybe a marginal feature anyway. Yeah. yeah um, you've got a chord mode as well. Chord mode's easier to set up. I mean, while you can hold down and go select a chord type, you can also just hold it down and, you know, hold some notes and create a chord shape like okay, that. Okay, yeah. Which yeah. is nice and quick that's, and easy. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, so I, who is this for? Yeah, so we touched on this at the start, kind of a discussion of who is this actually aimed at? So it's yeah. worth saying we we really like Astrolab and it's we'll kind of come back to some pros and cons at the end. But it's worth saying that, you know, it's it's very well implemented, it's good. Yeah. There's not really yeah. much of a question about whether it's kind of successful or not. No. It's more who actually needs this and yeah. whether it's serving those people. That's it. Well, so that's a little bit of history. I think if you think back, I think around 15 years now, yeah. so Go back the, a while. End of the noughties time. Arturia brought out something called Origin years oh, ago, and that was a, uh, if I remember rightly, I think it was kind of standalone DSP based thing, which effectively like a desktop synth, but it kind of incorporated some of those emulation elements yeah. into this kind of knob laden sort of semi modular yeah. desktop synth. Yeah. But kind of on paper, it's not the, a million miles away from um, what Astrolab is in terms of taking like those emulated sounds and putting them into hardware. Yeah. It's that refined. But on well, on paper, they're kind of similar. The, but the key difference is that where Origin was kind of a, a synth, yeah. something aimed at people who like to play around with synth... Tweaking. Tweaking and synth yeah. engines. This very much isn't. No. Like, if you're someone... As we've, as we've said before, you've got these kind of four macros here, which are set up for every preset, and obviously you can set up your own um, on the desktop. But what you can't do within the hardware itself is anything like for example you can't pull up a synth sound and say oh i wish that triangle wave oscillator was a square wave you've mm. got no access to any of that yeah you've got nothing really that we would call kind of proper sound design level no. things that you would you would you need your you know logging into yeah Hello lab Pro which is whatever, which yeah. is obviously to be fair the point of astrolab yeah. what astrolab does really well is it's really um it's very simple to use. It keeps everything very surface level, very upfront. Um, it's all about finding those presets, um, which are, you know, giving you a multitude of ways to find these different sounds, to organize them, to access them quickly, and giving you the kind of basic level of control that you need for a performance. Yeah, performance but, is the key word here, isn't it? Yeah, performance. Yeah. There. So in terms of studio applications, Arturia themselves do kind of pitch a few in the kind of promotional stuff for Astrolab. One being that, for example, because it will, it kind of controls Analog Lab at the same time as it kind of plays its own presets. So okay. you can kind of yeah. sync the two really yeah. nicely. So for example, you could use it to um, sort out latency problems when kind of tracking the studio. For example, you can have someone playing a synth preset here. They can monitor themselves using, without any latency from the headphones here, yeah. Yeah. but also be controlling a MIDI performance in the box, which is then mm -hmm. fully editable later. Yeah. And also yeah. it doesn't matter about, you know, buffer sizes and things like sure, that. Sure. It's, so you're kind of overcoming latency issues. Obviously that's that's not um it's not that that's not helpful, but given the price point of this is kind of what sixteen hundred dollars, yes. you've got to really need that kind of latency sorting out to make it warrant it to be, yeah, for it to be worth solely buying. for those purposes. Yeah. 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 I mean obviously there's also kind of nice at home um, reasons you might have this in the same way that a lot of people have kind of stage pianos and things at home. It's it's a nice thing to play. It's nice to be able to obviously play all of those synth sounds and those piano sounds and keyboard sounds without having to uh, switch on your studio and have everything um, everything running to yeah, do yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but but generally speaking, for kind of studio purposes, if you're kind of a, a studio producer or someone who doesn't really perform live, you're still better off with just Control. a controller and the yeah. and the software itself. You because you, know, you won't benefit from these other options so much. And there's not really anything that you're getting in Astrolab that isn't kind of you can't do already. Yeah. You can't really do already. Yeah. Arguably maybe, you know, some of the kind of layering stuff and things, but mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. depending on what controller you're using and things like that. But still um, but still, yeah, from a studio point of view, it's not it's it's not really aimed at that audience. I don't no, think the audience here is obviously 
you know, mainly performers and gigging people and things yeah. like that. And there's really, but there really is a lot to recommend it for that audience. Although, I mean, I suppose home producing audience, if you've got a 1600 sort of pound dollar size hole that you're willing to fill, having that kind of untethered sort of experience where you don't need to, you know, you can go a bit doorless every now and then and you're yeah. just like, actually, I just want to jam. I just want to jam. It is ideal for that. But like you say, more aimed at performers and stage pros. Yeah, stage pros, people, if, you know, say you're in a band, uh, say you're a wedding performer, say you're, yeah. you know, a session musician, something like that. The, the multitude of sounds that you have access to and how easy it is to organise those and um, stay on top of them makes it really recommendable for kind of that audience. Yeah. One thing it is worth saying that being aimed at that performance, um, it's interesting that Archeria, I mean, kind of, I say interesting, it kind of makes sense that they've launched with this 61 key option. But I was going to ask that. Just the 61? At the moment, there's just this 61 key oh, version. Oh, right, okay. Obviously, when you kind of you're talking to real players and things, you're, there's going to be a response that people would like an ATA. Where's the ATA, and where's that sort of you know the hammer action of the ATA as well? Yeah, and you can only assume that which Arturia, they do in their other brands. Yeah, you can only models, assume Australia have that either yeah. in the pipeline or kind of you know are very much looking at how this goes down to see whether one of those will be. But following. this this is kind of fills that secondary keyboard sort of hole as well for a lot of stage players, doesn't it? Yeah, and, and it's worth saying that um, so our, neither of us are kind of the most um, skillful keys players in the That's world. That's very politely. But we have um, a lot of our colleagues over at Music Radar are much better. Um, yes. Adam, who's behind the camera, and our colleague Ben, who's back in the office. Whose fingers you will see in the demos, of course. Yeah. Um, yes. Just not his face. Who, who have kind of collaborated on it with us on this yeah. for yeah. more of a player's perspective, mm. um, who, both of whom have been really impressed with how it feels, the semi-weighted action, really nice keyboard. Um, the aftertouch works really nicely. It's worth saying that the aftertouch is channel aftertouch, not poly aftertouch. Okay. Um, so, so let's come on to some pros and cons. So that's yeah. kind of that's, that's a con. one potential con. I mean, yeah. if you look at the this kind of stage piano stage keyboard market, um, that it's not like that makes it a massive outlier. Um, and depending on the sound you're using, it's kind of poly aftertouch almost whether it makes sense or not is kind of debatable i would say actually because you've got pigments in here which obviously can make use of those sounds mm -hmm. yeah um, it'd be nice to have that it's a shame not to be yeah, able to do that but yeah. I, I can't see it being a massive deal breaker for too many people sure other than that kind of you know there's not that much that we have negative to say about that again no. we're not what we're doing not doing here is reviewing the sounds themselves so much, the quality of the V collection. We've spoken about V collection loads of times in the past on Music Radar, in the magazines. Um, f we're fans. We, you know, personally, we are. We, we, I, we I use, use it. it. I use it quite a lot. I think yeah, it's really same. nice and really handy. But, you know, this is all the V collection sounds. If V collection hasn't impressed you in the past, the sounds here aren't going to impress you. No. If you like V collection, you will like the sounds here. Yeah. We're not. We're not really reviewing that or, de or debating that. No. What we're talking about more is how they've been implemented and the implementation of this and how easy it is to access things and control things. And as we kind of saw, how easy it is to manipulate sounds and get them onto here is really nicely thought through and the workflow is really good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, this comes with um, Analog Lab Pro. Yeah. So it comes with the presets and all of those sounds. If you want to do the full editing, as we were showing before, you will need to buy um, either kind of individual plugins or the whole V collection yeah, yourselves. Of course. I mean, personally, as someone who likes to mess around with synth engines, I would, if I was going to buy this, I would probably, I'd, you know, go all in and buy the software as well. Yeah. I don't know what Arturia are planning on offering, whether there's some sort of, you know, the hope buy is there's some kind of deal. deal going on, yeah. yeah. But whether or not it kind of seems like a no-brainer to me that if mm. you're going to buy in, you want to go in all in on the ecosystem. But that being said, for a lot of people who play things are kind of more just into the, the playing rather than the sound design, you don't necessarily need you that. You don't need to, and, and it will obviously pick up on any kind of expansions of the collection in the future. The, the presets will then be expanded here. Yeah. Um, we should talk about the hardware... Yep. The chassis itself, it is metal, it is solid, looks like it can take a kicking. However, 
that's not real wood. Yeah, we were talking we about We thought it was earlier, to start with. Because when we first got this out, it looks, obviously, it looks really nice. From, feels from nice. here, from where you're seeing, that looks like real wood, but up close, no. This, you, to quote Akai from uh, Rhythm Wolf days, this is real simulated wood grain. <laughs> yeah. It's a we, picture. If Yeah, if you look at very <laughs> close, you yeah. can kind of see the resolution on that, can't you? So, yeah, it's a bit of a shame, but at the same time, I don't think I want to take this out gigging if it was real walnut or whatever and it, it so that's fine would likely make it heavier than it is it's kind exactly. of not the not the lightest um, no sturdy i'd say but, but um yeah also not too unreasonable to no carry around a gig um arguably uh, there's with the kind of discussion all of us on our team some people have said that they would like this screen bigger i can kind of understand that my eyesight is going a bit i've changed shonky. my mind i've changed my mind because when we first opened this up yeah and eyesight issues also um, age related obviously I bought to the idea of this being so small but actually in use I've not had a problem with it and even this far it's still very legible at this angle it's yeah I mean the UI is nicely designed so that actually yeah, you're not, I've, most of the time I've you're not to it. really struggling to find things or see what's going on uh, it kind of feels nice it's a nice way to browse sounds yeah you could maybe have it bigger um, Again, you also could argue that you could have more functionality out of that looper and some sort of sequencing thing would be nice. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't think it's necessarily a deal breaker. No. Um, semi weighted keybed. Yeah. Um, and I'd say 61. The hope that if they do an 88, that would be hammer action, wouldn't it? We'd hope. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, yeah, that's likely to be the sticking point for some people looking at this at the moment. People saying that they kind of want the 88 key. That kind of and maybe a 49er because that's the usual, isn't it? 88, 61, 49 in the uh, sort of key lab stakes. Yeah, I mean, how much when you get into the smaller ones, how useful those are because you're kind of getting into controller rock world. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. but yeah. But anyway, summary Astrolab, it's really nice implementation of what's a really generally a really good idea. Yeah. Um, it kind of feels like a combination of that whole kind of V collection analog lab world in that player preset easy access of sounds mm -hmm. and it's um it's nicely done yeah and also i think for the price of um i think the the recommended retail price is what 1600 dollars, right which kind of puts it around the level of things like korgs or sv2 and yes although that's i think around the level of the 88 Okay, yeah, case. Yeah, but anyway, yeah. but within the kind of context of stage pianos and things mm -hmm. like that, it's a fairly competitive um, and well-priced position. And I think given the functionality you get with Wi-Fi and with mm -hmm. the desktop version, the app and things, I think it's a pretty reasonable price. And expandability, you yeah. know, future-proofed. Right, yeah. well, we like Astrolab. Um, so, yeah, thanks for doing that, Sai. Um, don't forget to do all the liking, subscribing stuff hit those buttons and um, if you agree with us go down to the comment section tell us why or not up to you um, until next time we'll see you soon so cheers thanks